I am a Professor Julio Rezen. I'm from Brazil. And uh, I am doing uh, research about uh, different topics re related with space exploration. Uh, then uh, I'm doing a partnership with uh, Nikolai uh, Moitsev. He's an engineer from the company Final Frontier Design. And we also have the student David Souza, part of this research too. And then now, during the last days, we can see a lot of news about the space exploration, some updates about the Artemis uh, uh, project, NASA project. Then uh, each day is becoming uh, closer, the possibilities of real exploration about Mars and, and the return to the moon. Yeah. And then with the new, new perspective, it's, uh, it's very necessary we uh, analyze the possibilities or, or, and kind of implications of uh, the real extra vehicle activities in, in surface of Mars and Moon. So, uh, one of the, the key issues and more in, in important uh, reflections that we need to do is related with dust. No? Uh, because in the last maybe uh, 40 or, or 50 years after the Apollo program, all the, all the operations, all the uh, extravehicular activities is based in the International Space Station in a circumstance that we don't have the, uh, the implication of dust. You know? uh, in this case, when it's become closer, the, the possibility of uh, you stay in the ground of Moon and Mars, you need to f make some reflection about what kind of implication those would bring to the, to the clothes, to the spacesuits. Uh, during this week in, in NASA, uh, the administrator, Jim Bridenstine, uh, he did a, a presentation. This presentation was uh, communicated uh, by, by social media and Facebook. Uh, we have some images here from the, this event, I believe it was Wednesday uh, or Tuesday that happened this, during this week. And then the Jim Brandstein presents some updates about the spacesuit. Here we have some, some prints about the, uh, this great event organized by NASA. Uh, presented the spacesuit that will be used in, in Artemis program, the, the new ex, new is, is steps uh, to NASA space program to moon exploration. Then something important to see in this image, uh, one of the great challenge is about the junction and the connection between each piece of the cloth, each piece of spacesuit, because uh, in, in the case of those, you can see, you can imagine different problems related with those, the impregnancy in the cloth, in the garment, and also in the joints, you know, uh, in, the, in the connections. And you can see different kinds of problems that we have uh, when you have the dust with, combined with lubrificants. You know? And what kind of da damage this will bring to the to the spacesuits? So, and then uh, other important element is the connection between the glove and the the rest of the spacesuit. Then uh, we we have a uh, is been done different uh, research about the spacesuits. So, uh, one of the research done is by the company Final Frontier Design. The Final Frontier Design, they are based in, in Brooklyn, New York. And then there's a private startup company based in Brooklyn, and, and also they, are, they have contracts with NASA and, and I believe with Canadian agency, Canadian agency. And then we, in this picture we have Nick, uh, about the spacesuit that company developed it. His, this picture is in the office in the Brooklyn. Here we have all the picture. Oh, he's a uh, Ted, Ted and Nick. And Nick was a uh, is a, a former, a uh, former engineer of the MIR program, the the Russian Space Agency. 
And then uh, we have here uh, other photo of the spacesuit developed by them. And then during this week, uh, they did some tests about this spacesuit in Ottawa. Here we have some photos of, of the videos that they shared in, in microgravity, testing the spacesuit. And then here we have uh, other example. Uh, is in this case is the is uh, the proposal the the Orion and Artemis EVA spacesuit developed by Harris Aerospace. And then he says uh, the Gary Harris is is, uh, is in this photo. You can see that he's presenting the the proposed spacesuit. <coughs> You can, you can see a lot of connections of the spacesuit here. Then we will be presenting some considerations, and we would like to mention that uh, this presentation is open to, uh, to participation of everyone with different perspectives and, and comments, because this, uh, this research is, is more about considerations. It's not, uh, we're not presenting some uh, final findings, but uh, some considerations about what kind of thing we need to, to consider in terms of in terms of development of space suits. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, a few issues become relevant uh, when we are talking about moon and Mars exploration. Uh, what kind of protections for <coughs> EVAs activities we need to consider you know, to the EVAs in Mars and Moon? Uh, what kind of materials would be less contaminated with moon and moon dust, no, and Mars Mars dust too? And I was talking with Nick, and he talked about some something electrical in a garment with some some electric charge that would be uh, re repelling the the dust. No, this would be a, a, an option. Uh, something electro property in the in the garment to you know, to the the does not, not stay uh, uh, connected with the with the cloth uh, other questions what what, uh, what kind of space suit would provide higher protection safety for the astronauts and it's uh, one of, of the main issues uh, because if, if you talk about uh, moon, uh, you, it's more easy if, if, uh, if you have a problem with the health of an astronaut, bring back you know, to the Earth to a, a health treatment. But if you talk about Mars, it's become difficult. In this case, uh, uh, we need to think about uh, a spacesuit that brings uh, safety to the astronaut, in, maybe in the, the activities in Mars. This is a uh, in the back, background is a, a back, is an image of the new movie of Brad Pitt uh, Ad Astra, you know? and then I I put this photo only to you have a dimension uh, is uh, only to illustrate the how is uh, what possible contamination would have with with Mars dust, you no, know? and then I believe this is a uh, one of the most critical elements to space exploration. We evaluate the consequence about the dose, you know, because would have uh, also uh, problems related with with uh, engineering, engineering problems, but also have uh, health problems too. Uh, these these two perspectives are connected. Uh, we in examinations of the the kind of material and and moon and also consideration about the Mars dust. We will have some problems with the sharp dust you know, because this would cut the garment, also contaminate the garment. Uh, sometimes difficult to do a, a kind of cleanness of this, this garment. Uh, injured the space suits, not good combination with lubrificants. Uh, develop allergies to astronauts. Uh, develop several kinds of disease which is hard to to think about. Uh, I believe one of the main problems related with the uh, health astronauts is related with uh, respiratory uh, diseases you know, because it's 
when we when we are uh, imagine about the activities in Mars in some movies, some series that we'll be watching, you, you it's possible to see a lot of contamination about those. Uh, we have uh, some some physical barriers in, in space habitats, but in, in, in mainly in of cases you can see the contamination side the habitats of those. No, and then this is a uh, very important. We think about these consequences. Yeah, in this case, we we have great challenge to relate with related to space suite design, uh, how to improve the space suite protection during EVA, you know, uh, how to avoid dust contamination, and how to clean the space suits and equipments after uh, extra vehicle activities. This is some important question that we need to think about. Because when we see the the Apollo missions, uh, we don't have a, a, a space suit used many times. No? It's used only during a short time, during the EVAs, and then this, now these uh, the space suits are museum, museum uh, artifacts. No? But if you have a, a permanent base in Mars and Moon, uh, we would consider that the space suit it will be used uh, uh, during several times, you know? and then this is a uh, this demand. So some reflections about. Then uh, it's necessary to think about some about research and development related with uh, clean cleansing procedures, also maintenance procedures too, and also protocols uh, to identify damage in the spacesuit, uh, sometimes uh, looking what kind of uh, uh, image image de detection. Now, sometimes uh, detections that we, uh, sometimes uh, damage that you can see with our eyes, but with a specific machine or would identify some damage in the, in the spacesuit uh, and, and, and provide some guidelines to fix. No, in this case, the less the less considerations about procedures for fixed damage. Okay. And then, uh, in my discussion <coughs> with Nick uh, from Fine Frontier Design, he's we are talking about is very important the the, the space analog missions. You no, know, the that happens in different parts of the world because you can you can see. Uh, 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 predict some 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 possibilities some some uh, problems that we we'll have in future in, in extra vehicle activities operational no? in this case the the uh, mars, an mars analog stations around the world uh, is is important uh, places to to test the, the space suits no here we, in this image we have different uh, Mars analog research stations found in different years. Uh, in Brazil, I am <coughs> coordinating the Habitat Martin in in is the first permanent uh, the, the the first permanent <coughs> research station in South Hemisphere, and then we have more recently uh, the Mars Camp in uh, 2019 in China. No, uh, it's, uh, they also have a uh, specific space suits to to use in, in the Gobi Desert. And also, uh, recently I had I had notes about uh, 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 analog analog space uh, station in Dakota, North Dakota too. And then we we have an image of the space suits. I know that these space suits that will be presented is not to be used in really in space, but in, in space analog missions. No, this the space suit using in Mars Desert Research Station. And this is a uh, space suit used in the Habitat Marte in Brazil. And then this uh, the space suit used by uh, by the project of University of North Dak or North Dakota. Yeah? They have a department there, uh, John uh, John Odgard School of Aerospace Science. And his uh, space suit uh, really 
fantastic, the, the proposal of them. Uh, these images is recently uh, one of the uh, analog space astronauts is David. He's in the event today. This is in, in some, uh, I talked today with him during the Mars Society Convention. And then uh, this is interesting uh, to think about and uh, uh, reflect about the challenges of these spacesuits. And then in, uh, we have this image to uh, the professors of North Dakota University with Jim Bridenstein. They are presenting the spacesuit developed by them. And then according, uh, according with Nick, Nick from Fine Frontier Design, for each one hour space extra vehicle activity, 100 hours we spend in space and analog habitats. And then is a, uh, bring some reflections about we have have more attention to to this kind of space analog stations no? because this the, the the these areas would be a good place to test you no know, the, the space suites and we have a different uh, analog uh, regions around the world here close to los angeles we have death valley you know it's a beautiful place that would be a a place to, to make some tests of, of this kind of spacesuit. Then, uh, this is uh, some of my considerations about the spacesuits. And I hope that if you have some suggestion or some point that we're not considering this presentation. And then, this is my email in my Twitter. Okay, thanks so much for the attention. Ethan. What can you tell me about improvements in the globe? <coughs> yes, uh, the globes, uh, is, uh, they develop a lot of attention about the globes because they need to keep the pressure inside and the movement, no? And if, if they are, the, the hands will be used no, in different activities in, in to collect uh, soil samples, rocks, and also make the uh, the movement with with tools, no. And then as a, as a we can we can it's possible imagine that a lot of those will contaminate the globe, no. It's a a hard of attention you need to know you need to have to with the the globes, yes. And what kind of procedure would be used to clean the globes too? Yeah. Uh, two phase question. One is, are you uh, at all working with? Uh, Devin Newman on the uh, more flexible form fitting, uh, less connections mm -hmm. necessary uh, for agility. And uh, also, do you know how the fabric is coming along for radiation resistance? Yes, I, I saw today or yesterday uh, a new spacesuit developed by Under Armour. Uh, I believe that was developed by two. Uh, uh, Vision Galactic, I believe they, they, and then I believe if you have less connections, then this would be a, a good thing, you no? Know, to, to because in these connections, uh, probably we have more deposits of of dust, you no? Know? And then if you have less connections, if uh, like uh, the proposal of SpaceX uh, spacesuits, now we now we we have a, a generation of new kind of spacesuits proposed by Vision and also SpaceX, you know, more, more fit, more lighter. And then what I would see, we have a competition be, between these two concepts of spacesuits, the, the larger uh, spacesuits that we are uh, familiar, familiar to see and the new spacesuits that looks like a, a, a common, like a, a diver, you know, like a diver suit. Yes. So, and then uh, there's a lot of uh, speculation, some some uh, uh, warnings about this, the new spacesuits, the, the, the new generation spacesuits. And then uh, we also some some debate about the transportation of the first astronauts by SpaceX capsule. And then we are very close to to see 
new possibilities of about the, the options about the space suits you know? but i believe one of also the two considerations are interesting and but we need to think also about new materials you know? new yes. materials that will be considered to avoid this deposit of dust because if you, if you have less deposit of dust in the garment this would be good for for us too. For, to, to the astronauts, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, oh, my question. Hey, would you do my photo, please? Okay, thank you. Okay. My question is about the mass of the spacesuit that will be usable on Mars. I understand the spacesuits we used on the moon 50 years ago have much too high a mass for Martian gravity for people to actually be able to work on them and walk around with them. Uh, do you know what mass the Artemis proposed spacesuit has if that spacesuit could be used on Mars or you know, what would be an acceptable mass so that under 38 percent Martian gravity people could actually work in a spacesuit what do we have to get the mass down to from what it was on the Apollo area yes I, I don't have the the answer about but it's a good consideration no, in a in a to think about uh, one thing one of the uh, aspects of my discussion with Nick is about if you have a very rigid, very rigid spacesuit, if the astronauts falls, uh, if they have the, if the spacesuit will provide some safety to he, he, he bring back. Because if you have a, a, a less uh, uh, gravity in, in, in Mars, uh, the, the falls will be more frequent and then this would be a we have a higher risk to the astronauts, okay? and you have a uh, in this this is this uh in this case will be considered safer for two astronauts in uh, about some some possible falls. A uh, moon is safer than Mars. Mars sometimes some some falls uh, would damage the the spacesuit. Sometimes would also have a uh, something depends on the kind of fall. This will also bring some some health problem to the astronaut too. And then it's a is an interesting topic to to consider in the the further uh, research about. Thank you. So uh, in the debate of about having fully pressurized spacesuits versus smart elasticized form fitting ones with insulation, is it possible or has anyone? trying to develop a hybrid system in which perhaps the, the extremities are mm -hmm. form-fitting and elasticized and then maybe, uh, you know, a more pressurized. Yes, uh, yes, very good consideration. Uh, in, our, in our discussion, uh, with 3D printing, uh, it's possible to uh, uh, have a, in the, in a, it's a real possibility, you know, in the, in the next step. We have this uh, hybrid, hybrid perspective. Uh, some parts more rigid, and more to more safety, is sometimes more, f more, more uh, permitting more movements. No, and then with new new possibilities of 3D printing or new materials used in, in 3D printing, I believe. And sometimes uh, in 3, 3D printing process, sometimes depends on the area that will be printed. Uh, uh, change the elements or, or the garment, the, the filament that will be used, not to you have a, a different in a, in a same in a same uh, uh, spacesuit, uh, different elements used, uh, like a combination, no? like a ballet using the different materials to produce the, the spacesuit. I believe this is an interesting perspective. I believe in, in maybe uh, at least uh, five or ten years we have a, a, a is a, a very interesting uh, area of research and development, the combination of different techniques and combination of different techniques of 3D, 3, 3D printing. You know? It's a very good question, yes. I, I missed the first part of your presentation, so I apologize if this is redundant. Um, what PSI are you running your spacesuits at above ambient? Yes, I, I don't have this answer yet, sorry. Okay. And you can discuss after you yeah. yes. and the second question would be have you followed the work of pacific space flight yes uh we are it's uh this research this research is in a 
uh, in a first stage, and then we are discussing more with students too, and of our research group about these these possibilities too. But if you want, I, we can change the cards and and discuss more about. And also, some we are also interested to international discussion about this. Uh, and then, if you have some someone would like to discuss with us, we can make a group or, or a small group to discuss about this and, and prepare some papers or some research related. In the mid '60s, or early '60s, Life magazine had a picture of the human on the moon in simply a leotard. The argument was that the human skin can resist the vacuum, and it was plausible with just a helmet. Yeah. Um, obviously, as others have mentioned, that cuts down the moment arm for the joints and such, which drastically changes the uh, the inflation issue of, mo of movement. Yes, yeah. yes. I in the fi final frontier design uh, office is a small industry with, with, with some people there. Uh, one of the main. Uh, challenge of them is reflect about the gloves no, it's reflect about the gloves because it's a it's a you need to keep the movement of the fingers the movement of the 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 muscles and then uh, uh it's a uh, i believe one of the most uh, sensible elements in the spacesuit that uh, this need, need to think about Life Magazine's other argument was is that the human blood system at its optimum can transfer heat very quickly from the hot side to the cold side. Yeah. Yeah, so I believe it would be interesting to to consider this, no? Uh, this possibility, no? Yes, I if you have uh if you have uh, the article that would mention to me or would find both, uh, possible to find it would, would be very grateful about. Thank you. Okay, 2.30, okay, thanks so much, if you have some, my God. Uh...